Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Berlis and let's start talking about what has been going on in the tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. There may be some affiliate links here and there, but it doesn't cost a thing for you as well. And all the links will be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point that is better for your chosen. And we start this time around with a production from RPG Latam, the Latin American scene for tabletop RPGs, that is From the Mud, released by Queen, that is a game hack from Kyrne in the mini zini format, and it brings players to the place of dead soldiers trying to overthrow a tyrant. The game looks amazing, this is the first thing, but it brings a lot of atmosphere with the aesthetics of it all, and it is released in English as well as Brazilian Portuguese. And another release, coming also from the Americas, this time comes from further north, more precisely Canada, Monkey's Paw Games brings to, for us Tombs of the Theurge, a threefold pamphlet that is the first of a series that is called the Little Coffin series. Very evocative. But it is an OSR inspired, so compatible with Bright Hammer, the Vanilla game, Pink Hack, and some other ones. And it brings a scenario for an adventure as well as some interesting random tables, which we dig a lot here in this channel. And talking about tombs, corpses and the like, from Sandy Pug Games, there is now on Kickstarter for crowdfunding the exquisite Corpse in Maggot's Kip. And it is a marvelous illustrated interactive game book in which each new choice is written by a different author. So each time you take a choice uh, you, you, or one op option inside the game, it will be written by a different author. And it's looking amazing. And a lot of people that saw already the betas and the playtests, they were already very fan of it and very fond of it as well. And if you want to get a hard cover of it, you better move fast as they are being snagged really, really quickly, and the campaign has still around 20 days to go, and they were close to 70% funding, so I really hope that we can move it more and make it funded. And since we are talking about Kickstarters, we have this amazing campaign by Double Proficiency and Exalted Funerals, that is making the release of it and the distribution, and it's named Herbalist's Primer, and it is a system agnostic title bringing more than 300 pages on plants and their folklore, and with more than 100 colored illustrations. It brings so many seeds and ideas on top of beautiful illustrations that I can't think of anyone that could not benefit from it on their games, their creations, and on the whole of it. The campaign is already pretty successful, and... You still have some time actually to check it out, but I do believe that it is a good way to supporting the indie scene and perhaps next episode we'll have some further infos and news. On initiatives, we wanted to bring to your attention the Indie Tabletop RPG Labor Exchange that was started by Max Shepard and it aims in bringing indie creators together for mutual aid. What it means is that you submit through a form that is in the description, you can check it out, but you submit to this form a task that you need uh, for your title and also your own capabilities that you can swap with another creator in exchange for their service and help. Hopefully, it is something that will work uh, on a time-for-time -time basis, so if you... If you are requiring two hours of someone's time, you will be giving two hours of your time and so on. This kind of abstract concept of time and not value money. You offer, that is more abstract actually, but you offer of sorts will then be listed on a kind of a job board that you can also find below. And if someone sees an offer that they believe that they can help, they can comment on it and then contact the originator of said offer. An interesting idea to make more indie titles available for release, because then we can exchange, we can help each other out, and we can have more titles of the indie scene out there. 
and on James. Gems. As we always have some gems here, uh, one that will start soon on September 1st and it will run up until the end of the year is the Random Adventure Gem. And the premise is easy. Uh, it's made by Chris Bissett from the Room and they created an adventure title generator and it creates the title for an adventure for, uh, for you from it. Right now, since it is updated, it generates like five titles in a row or something like that. But either way, you use it, you create a title, and then you use it to create a new adventure. And so, no new games, but rather adventures using the name that was auto-generated. It also brings you prizes, but not for any kind of winners. Uh, there are no judges here, but some people that submitted will be randomly chosen to receive prizes from Luder Room, from Monkey's Paws Games, from Michael Lombardi, from Bats, and perhaps even more names will come up, but then they will be randomly selected by the end of the jam. And it is better explained in the jam page how the selection will be and whatever you can win from it. But I always enjoy random prompts and seeds because it can stimulate your creativity and it comes with no surprise that I love it, this one and this jam is just calling for me to try and submit something. It's a very good opportunity for you also to try and kickstart your creativity. And for the other recurring part of our show that is threads and posts. This time around, we have a post by Marcia Chiquita Fajita that was mentioned here more than once before. But this time we are talking about resource management using duration or consumption. And for example, instead of using uh, a regular time duration that we use for torches, I would say, we will perhaps use a variable kind of way, using a d6 to determine how many hours it will burn, or in another way, a random consumption. Every x rounds, we roll the dice and see if it consumes the torch or not. And some other ways of thinking about how to use resources in dungeon exploration, mainly on OSR or rule light system, but it's in it is interesting to posing questions, trying to backtrack some discussions and some ideas that came to it and why they were chosen. So I think that they might spice up a bit your game or better inform your game design going on and moving on for the next designs that you have. Either way, I enjoy the read a lot. And for tonight, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like them video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. If you liked it, you can comment, you can pay me a coffee in coffee because I cannot have a regular coffee thing or a patron. So you can pay me a coffee and coffee, the link is in the description. You can buy my games as well. And I will see you all in my next video. So see ya.